This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Hey guys, what's up? Lord Mitra again here, your Lord of Video Games, and welcome to another series. We are going to star Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. We are starting immediately after we finished uh, Persona 4 Golden. So, oh my god, we are... I am so excited. I am super super excited to to see what is in store for us here so apparently everyone was telling me that i should check out the persona 4 arena story first uh i mean let's see this what is this oh Okay, we're getting characters. I am so confused. What is this? So can I not go through Ultimax yet? I have to go through Persona 4 Arena. I mean, that's fine. That's fine, I guess. We are... Hmm. What is this, though? We're gonna start with you. We're gonna start this off without any further ado. And let's get into it. Blue. The floor, the ceiling, the furnishings. Everything's blue. Quite a long... Unlike what I normally see throughout my day. And yet, my heart is mysteriously calm. I recognize the slight rumbling as an engine and realize that I'm in a car. Or rather, someplace else I recognize. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Igor! The old man with the bizarre face sitting before me makes an expression that appears to be a smile. Sitting quietly next to old man is a woman as beautiful and as delicate as an ice sculpture. Ah, it seems we have a guest with an intriguing destiny. My name is Igor. I am delighted to make your acquaintance. Nice meeting you again, Igor. The Velvet Room, Igor. Even though I'm barely conscious, I remember that this is not the first time I've heard those names. I see. This is a dream. It's happened in the past. I've been in this room before. If my memory is correct, what he says next is... This place exists between dream and reality. Mind, mind and, and matter. matter. 
It is a room that only those who are bound by a contract may enter. It may be that such a fate awaits you in the near future. The words I expect to hear fall from the old man's mouth. I'm surprised that I still remember them. Another me, the one not in the dream, can't help but smile at that. Now then, why don't you introduce yourself? I remember this, too. When I said my name here, it forged a contract with them. And so I answer. You, Narukami. When I open my eyes, the light is so blinding that I have to squint. I'm squinting. For a moment, I can't figure out where I am, and I look around. Right. I was on my way back. Oh, that's you. Oh, oh. I recognize this voice. I mutter to myself and look out the window. The sky is somewhat cloudy, unfortunately, but the scenery is as peaceful as always. I am always going to be butchering things, and I am so sorry. It seems that I fell asleep on the train headed to the countryside, where I spent the last year in Inaba. If I recall correctly, when I first came to that town, it was an afternoon just like this. Is this the summer? I dozed off in the same way then and summoned to the velvet room. That was when Igor said that misfortunes would befall me, and just as he foretold, I was dragged into an outrageous murder mystery. It was no ordinary case. Midnight Channel, Shadows, and Personas, the powers of the heart. I saw things that could scarcely be believed. But I made memories there that could never be replaced as well. We gained the power of the Personas, and we suffered together. I stood with my friends on the investigation team against these misfortunes and fought alongside them. There's no way I could have overcome such ordeals without their help. I wonder what everyone's been up to. After solving the mystery, it was decided I would leave Inaba since my parents would be returning from overseas around the same time. It's been about two months since I last saw them. All, as they said, goodbye to me at the train station. Okay, so this is two months after. So this takes before the ending of Golden, before I come back again again. Okay. Because everybody said that the ending of Golden takes place like five or six months after. Like the true ending, I mean. I decided to stay at the Dojima residence during Golden Week so that I could spend the holiday with my friends. Of course, my uncle was happy to hear this, and his only daughter, Nanako, would be glad to see me too. Oh, damn it. I still haven't picked up Yosuke's gift. Oh, no. But it's something quite particular, I guess. Actually, I received a call from Teddy. One of my investigation team friends this morning. The details of the conversation were a bit troublesome. Hello! Is this Sensei? Oh god. Yeah, what's up? What's up? I'm really sorry to bring this up, but I forgot to tell you something very important. That is. I have a special request for the souvenirs. I'm sure you'll be bringing your best friend. Teddy. Pretty sure you're not supposed to tell people what you want them to bring you as souvenirs. I already has souvenirs for everyone, but oh well. Sure enough, Teddy was only asking for some snacks that aren't sold in Inaba, but it wasn't much trouble. Ah, there was one problem. Oh, and one more thing. Can I ask you to pick up something for Yosuke too? I was planning on bringing something for everyone anyway, but go ahead. Cool! Well, Yosuke's been down in the dumps after his mommy burned his favorite nurse. Huh? She was what I called scorching hot! <laughs> Just kidding. I imagine a magazine, right? A nurse? Aw, oh, come on, Sensei. You know what I'm talking about. I think. This nurse magazine with the chest examinations and the bear behind. Oh, my lord. I see. Ah, <sighs> we're just starting the game, Teddy. Come on. No, oh, I'm sorry, Sensei. I just want you to be the very good friend to him. I hate my life. Uh, and you expect me to buy him a replacement? <laughs> of course, silly. People coming to visit are supposed to bring presents. I'm not bringing him that. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Oh, I was planning to head back tomorrow, but since we're meeting up early, I decided to go back today. Can you pass that on to everyone? Aha! Then the sexy nurses will be arriving even sooner! Oh my lord. Be like, like, Sensei, we have an emergency patient. They will be so happy! Oh my god. Why am I putting myself through this again, Teddy? Okay, then. We'll be waiting for you. <sighs> I'm a little worried now. Hope he isn't telling everybody that would give them the wrong idea. Well, I should just call again once I get there. But in the end... Nurses, huh? Yikes. I wasn't able to pick one up for him. How can I put it? I feel bad for Yosuke if I gave him that magazine and... Every time he opened it, his friend's face kept popping up in his head. And I have to think, Yosuke has his pride too. He doesn't need me buying him this stuff. That's true. Again, this is Yosuke we're talking about. I'm sure he'll understand if I explain my reasoning. Probably. Now pulling into Yaso Inaba. This will be the last stop. Yaso Inaba. Oh. There we go. In the line already. Looks like I've been asleep for a lot longer than I thought. This is a, that thought came to me. A certain worry crossed my mind. I've had a dream of the Velvet Room. Does that mean I'm going to be dragged into another adventure? No, I shouldn't think such things. I'm overthinking it. Igor has said, I'm delighted to make your acquaintance after all. So it's nothing but a dream quite misleading since I've had dreams of being summoned into that room ever since. The train begins to slow and I take that as my cue to gather my belongings from the luggage rack above me. The train comes to a complete stop and the doors open and the smell of the wind evokes a sense of nostalgia. <laughs> I'm getting a little too sentimental. I step out of the platform with a wry smile. Place a bookmark. Uh... I don't know what that is, but okay. Oh, that's a save. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I'm standing in front of the train station, but this town is as quiet as it's always been. I realize the sun has started to set. The orange sky envelops the world. Now, what should I do? Today is May 2nd. According to the calendar, the latter to laugh at the... The latter half of the holidays will begin tomorrow. I told Dojima-san that I was going to arrive today, but it seems he's been too busy with work to come get me. Ryotaro Dojima. He's my uncle. He said him in last year. He's a detective with the Inaba police, and he's raising his elementary school aged daughter, Nanako, by himself. It seems that he was suddenly contacted by a detective from the Metropolitan Police Department regarding last year's case, and will have to work late. What happened last year was very serious, so it's not too surprising he's so busy. He shouldn't have to worry about it. I recall how apologetic he sounded over the phone and can't help smiling. I told him that I knew the way over from the station, but a backpack... Uh, but a backpack with necessities and souvenirs for everyone turns out to be quite a lot. Okay, I was like, what? Nanaka must be waiting for me alone at the house. So I want to get there as soon as possible, too. Be honest, I don't know when the bus will come. Maybe I should just call for a taxi? Just as I'm thinking this. Huh? Nanako? <laughs> Big bro! Nanako, you came walking here? It is Nanako. There's no way I'd mistake her. You came to meet me all on your own? Why'd you come to the station all by yourself? True, the Dojima residence is within rocking distance, but it couldn't have been easy for her. Oh. Even though it's still light out, it will get dark soon, and the country roads are barely lit. What would she have done if I hadn't been here? I'm about to voice my concerns, but Nanako sounds slightly proud of when she says, Don't worry, Dad knows about it. He gave me money for the bus. Oh, you went on the bus. He said he couldn't make it, so I came instead. Welcome back, big bro. I wanted to see you so much. Aw, I missed you, Nanako. <laughs> Thanks. I'm happy to see you again, too. I see. She must have wanted to show me that she was grown up, too. She was around that age, after all. For a moment, I'm surprised that Dojima-san let her do this. But 
I kind of imagine what conversation took place. Nanako had always been a capable girl, but over the past year, her housekeeping skills have improved greatly, and she's proven to be very reliable. She takes the lead in many things within the house, and even Dojima-san can't compete with her sometimes. I can easily imagine that scene in my mind. And it's true that I'm glad someone came to welcome me. I take Nanako's hand and we begin walking side by side. Well, no sense standing around here. What's in the fridge at home? <laughs> Who wants? Dad and I bought a ton of stuff since you were coming to visit. Oh, am I cooking? I love to cook. If Nanako says so, then he really must have bought a lot. Sojima-san did say he'd pick up dinner for us, but if that's the case, maybe I should put together something to go with it. I ask Nanako what she wants to eat, and she looks back with a twinkle in her eyes. Are you gonna cook dinner? Ooh, yes. I wanna help. All right. Nanako and I make small talk while we walk through Inaba together for the first time in a little while. Being here like this makes me feel as if I'd gone back in time to a year ago. Huh. After we get back to the Dojima house, I hurry and unpack my belongings before heading to the kitchen. Nanako helps me out as diligently as she had claimed earlier. The way she mixes the eggs seems more skillful than before. I actually had eggs this morning. Talked about it. You're such a good girl, Nanako. Good evening. This is the evening journal with news for May 2nd. Our top story is on the domestic airline that was hijacked yesterday. Whoa. The TV in the living room echoes throughout the house. Thinking back on it, it was quite often in this place. When I first came to Inaba, Nanako was practically being raised by the television. <laughs> That's true. There had been this odd sense of distance between us around that time. She hadn't started calling me Big Bro, and we didn't cook together like we're doing now. It's the little things that bring back memories. Right as we were about done making dinner, Dojima Sons arrives with some deluxe sushi. Ooh. Nanako quickly gets up and rushes to the door. She seems so happy when her father comes home. Aww. Dojima-san apologizes about the certain increase in his workload, and then we all sit at the table and begin eating. Being here like this makes me feel like the two months I was gone never happened at all. There's a warm atmosphere, as if I've always been part of this family and I have lived with them for my entire life. I thank both of them from deep in my heart, and after I give them the souvenirs I bought for them, we enjoy chatting with each other as a family. Aw, this is awesome. Phew. Another familiar room. This is a room that was prepared for me on the second floor of the Dojima residence. Anago had fallen asleep after all the excitement. After carrying her to her room, I tell my uncle that I'll be going to bed early as well, since I have plans. Oh, a Catherine, um, a calendar. All he said was, okay, gesturing towards the second floor. I'm a little perplexed by this, but I have my suspicions, and as I open the door to my old room, it seems I was right. The room is no different than it had been when I was living here. It's exactly the same as it was when I left Inaba. I close the door with a feeling of wistfulness. As I sit down on my sofa and consider my uncle's thoughtfulness, I sigh in exhaustion from the long journey. I'll be able to see my friends tomorrow. Considering that there are still several days left in this holiday, it may be nice to leave early tomorrow and go visit the shopping district. It's raining. Ooh. Time is just before midnight. In mere moments, it will be a new day. Whenever it rains at night, I end up checking the time. While I spend the last year in Inaba, I was always checking for Midnight Channel which was a popular urban legend here in Inaba. It's a bad habit of mine, even when I'm not here. If you look at the turned off TV at midnight on a rainy night, you will see your soulmate. Discovering that this rumor was actually true was the first reason why I became involved in the murder investigation last year. But the person who actually appears on the midnight channel isn't your soulmate. It's the next victim. 
After discovering this, we all nervously sat before our TVs on a rainy night in order to solve the case. <laughs> that brings back some memories. Nothing will show anymore, though. Will nothing really appear, though? I suddenly have doubts. What I think that? After we solved the case, we all confirmed that the midnight channel wasn't appearing anymore. The empty screen stays silent. So why? Just in case. I'm going to turn on. There's no way. The more I think about it, the more I feel my resolve fading. I peer into the TV screen as if something is drawing me into it. The only thing I see is my reflection in the dark glass of the CRT television. Or so I thought. Oh no. Oh no. Rivals. They are friends, yet powerful foes. What the heck? Desperate fighting program amongst high school students. A new legend is about to start. Oh, this is epic, though. Be the manliest of all men. Teddy? Come on down! Nobody touches his precious Nanako, the sister complex kingpin of steel, you Narukami. Oh my God. Natural. Wage slave in the boonies by day, hero by night. Captain Rasantamo, Yosuke Hanamura. Everything that bores me has got to go. Oh a my god. The spunky dragon with deadly legs. The carnivore whose discarded womanhood, Shie Satunaka. You need to eat more meat. Oh my Plays lord. Please to the ring, my prince. The unconquerable snow black, Yukiko Amagi. I'll finish you in one strike. Blooming roses and bulging muzzles. The blood curdling beefcake emperor, Kanji Tatsumi. Oh, beefcake Deep emperor. In the realms of romance. The body of a child, the brain of a genius, the 2000 IQ killjoy detective, Naoto Shirogane! Is this an army of idiots? Oh my god. Fight and survive towards the one throne waiting at the end. The P1 Grand Prix where fierce fights will be fought. The battle begins tonight. Oh boy. That was dope, though. <laughs> Everybody's like, what? Oh, my God. What? Sister complex kingpin of steel? <laughs> was that me? Sister complex kingpin of steel? I'm impressed. There's so much wrong with that phrase. I don't know where to begin. No, I shouldn't be thinking about that. Those words aren't the problem here. I heard to make sure that the TV isn't plugged in. That was the Midnight Channel. What it was actually showing was rather ridiculous. But thinking back, everything the Midnight Channel showed last year didn't make it much sense either. I'm certainly gripped by the tension. If the Midnight Channel is appearing again, I have to find out why. I pull out my cell phone and search for Yosuke's number. Let's see, H. Hanamura Yosuke. I quickly hit the call button. Does everyone know about this? Is everyone aware that the Midnight Channel is still being broadcasted? Do they know that it's showing us? And how we've been giving taglines that can only be described as uncharitable? Yosuke? Yosuke? It's nothing. I just freaked out when you called all of a sudden. Yeah, that's it. What's up? Hey, when do you want to meet? I can tell what's going on just by the sound of his voice. Yosuke knows about what's happened on the Midnight Channel just now. And he's trying to hide that from me. Considering that I've been out of Inaba for a while, I bet he's trying to keep me from worrying about it. There's no need for him to be concerned about that. And again, I can kind of understand how he feels. I am his friend after all. That's not why I was calling. I saw the Midnight Channel. You saw it too, right? Uh huh? I can easily hear Yosuke's panicking on the other side of the phone. He's probably surprised that I saw the Midnight Channel when I shouldn't even be in Inaba right now. Must be thinking that the Midnight Channel is now appearing on a national TV network. Looks like Teddy didn't tell them after all. Did Teddy not tell you? 
Since we're meeting up early tomorrow, I decided to come today. I figured you wouldn't think I could have seen it, so I gave you a call. Uh, well, I assumed you weren't here yet, so I didn't want to rely on you. It's fine. <laughs> you haven't changed. So how about it? You're not going to leave this be, are you, Captain Rosantamo? <laughs> Why'd you zero in on that part? Did you see how they called you a sister complex kingpin? <laughs> Mine's not that bad. You think? Oh, I ought to tell you, that program's not the only strange thing lately. Oh, what's been going on? Rise and Kanji aren't here either. They disappeared. What? For a moment, I'm at a loss for words. Where's my girlfriend? Not only has the Midnight Channel come back on, we've lost contact with three of our friends. I have a bad feeling about this. Can't believe that those two things are unrelated. All right, we should get together tomorrow like we planned. Yeah, at the Jeunesse Food Court. Welcome back, partner. Yeah, I'm suddenly reminded that I haven't even greeted Yosuke yet. I finally feel the sense of worry fade a little, and I answer with a smile. It's good to be here. No matter what has happened, our friends may be in danger. If that's so, then there's only one thing to do. Hmm? Speaking of things I have to do. Oh, right. Sorry to say, I forgot to pick up your souvenir. A souvenir? Don't even worry about it, man. You sure? I thought you were really looking forward to it. Those nurses. Oh, fuck. Nurses? I had a feeling he wouldn't get it if I don't tell him flat out. It's rather hard to bring up, but oh well. Yeah, Teddy asked me to get it for you. He said you were crushed that they got burned. Oh, wait, this is all... <laughs> I didn't know you were into nurses. Oh my god, you! Ah, ah, shut up! That's enough! <laughs> Damn it, you're trying to wind me up, aren't you? Stay home, you jerk. <laughs> but I'm already here. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> At least it seems like he understands about a souvenir. In any case, the preparations have been made. Tomorrow, I'll meet with everyone to sort through whatever information we have on the situation. If we have to, we'll go back into that world. It'd be best if this was all just our imaginations. But unfortunately, we know that the Midnight Channel wouldn't have appeared without a reason. I should make sure I'm ready for tomorrow and get some rest. I need to, like, let it go like that so... I can read properly and not like mix things up. And Juness. This place is as lively as always. I look across the food court on Juness's roof for the first time in a while. Even though there aren't many people here in Inaba, this place is exceptionally crowded. Plus, because it's Golden Week as well, I feel like it's busier than usual. I have to run into Yosuke at the elevators to briefly greet each other. Those are weird like that. The closer we are, the more simple our interactions when we meet each other face to face. The two of us step out of the food court. We immediately find Yukiko and Chie. They wave back at us past the playground area from the bench they're sitting on. Good to see you guys again. Hmm. Welcome back! We missed you! Hey, I missed you guys too. Hey, you guys as well. Welcome back. Um, should we... Oh, he already knows about the Midnight Channel thing. He's actually the one who called me up about it. Oh, I see. This has turned into a pretty thrown-together reunion, hasn't it? Yep. But I'm glad you came. We chat some more while we all sit down. Then Yosuke stands up and clears his throat loudly. He's probably been waiting for the right moment to say something. He hasn't mentioned anything to me, but I can easily guess what he's about to say. We all look towards Yosuke. Well, it sucks that we can't hang out more before jumping into another mystery, but to celebrate our partner's return, I hereby reinstate the investigation team in response to the Midnight Channel going back on the air last night. All right, the investigation team is back, baby. We're back, baby. All right. Uh, I don't think the applause is necessary. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Why not? It's been two months since we last saw each other, after all. Chie and Yukiko start chuckling when I shrug. 
And though Yosuke seems saddened at all about that, he still ends up laughing at Long as well. It's a relief to see that they're the same as always, but because of that, it makes me even more worried about the friends that aren't here right now. We can't start slacking off. We begin to sort through the information that we know about already. Well, let's get cracking. I mean, this is no laughing matter. It's no one's true. heard from Teddy, Kanji, or Rise. Just those three, right? What about Naoto? Where is she? Yeah. Oh, I got a hold of Naoto-kun, but I didn't tell her about this stuff. Oh. She told me she couldn't make it today because of her job, so I didn't want to worry her. Understandable. She seemed pretty bummed that she couldn't be here, too. If she had a reason for not being here, and we still... And we can still contact her, then Naoto should be fine. That leaves Teddy, Rize, and Kanji. Not hearing back from then after an entire day has passed isn't normal at all. The relationship between their sudden disappearances and the reappearance of the Midnight Channel last night disturbs me. Um, one thing's been bothering me. The picture on the TV was very clear last night. Yeah. Yeah. Going by the pattern from last year, it wouldn't be that clear until after the victim entered the TV. Mm -hmm. Hey, isn't this the first time a big group of people was shown together? Plus, we're still here. Agree. Why us anyway? And what's up with those insulting descriptions? I don't know. She gets pretty angry about it. Any of the locals know about the rumor of the Midnight Channel? In other words, this troubling broadcast has already been seen by those who know by who knows how many people. Sorry. From what I've been told, the moment Chie tried to ask another student about the Midnight Channel, the other girls ran away with a look of fear on her face. Oh. Uh, it's no surprise that Chie would be angry. But in the end... What bothers me most is Teddy. He was acting like the host of that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we can't find him. This smells fishy. Like tuna! Then again, I doubt he would play a prank like this for no reason. Well, Teddy, what do you have to find we'll now? I just have to go inside the TV and find out what's going on. That's right. Go inside the TV. Out of everything, that was the element that shook our common sense the most out of everything we experienced last year. Naturally, murders in last year's events happened in another world inside the television. This world is filled with monsters called shadows that are born from humans' heart. People's hearts, sorry. Because my friends and I gained personas, the power to defeat these shadows, we were able to enter the TV screens and fight them. Won't we be stuck in there without Teddy to give us an exit? Oh, that is true. But even we persona users would find it extremely difficult to leave that world on our own. In order to come back, we need the exit TV that our friend Teddy was capable of creating. Uh-huh, not so. I've had Teddy keep the exit TV out on that side. Oh, okay. Look at you, all prepared. I mean, think about it. What if we were half asleep and fell into a TV when Teddy wasn't over there? Isn't that a scary thought? I mean, that's true. Like anyone would be that clumsy. You never know. Anyway, it sounds like it's safe for us to go investigate them. No matter what the reason is, it's reassuring to know we have an exit strategy ready for us. To be honest, I almost fell into the TV the first time it appeared in my room after all. Yeah, that's true. There's no doubt that something's going on in there. Is everyone ready? We're all good to go. To tell the truth, I had a hunch that this was going to happen. Oh? We all share a look to confirm our intentions. All of them nod back. I can see the seriousness in their eyes. Even though there was a two month gap since I last saw them, they still continue to put their trust in me. I feel a slight sense of pride as I stand up from the bench. The large screen TV in the electronics department is directly below the food court. That was the entrance we always used last year. There's a lot of animated scenes. Mm -hmm. It's a holiday, so the store's full of people. Huh. I feel like things are picking up around town. Oh, look at Airy! You know, it's been a while since last time. Mm -hmm. I'm a little nervous. 
Can we? Yep. Huh? Whoa, wait, there are still people in this aisle. Hey, get ready. Huh? The customers are going away. Jump, jump. <laughs> Let's go. Would the story have been the same if I chose somebody else? Chie or anyone else? I guess it ju you just choose who you want to play as. Whoa! Isn't this different from usual? Oh no! Yep. What do we do? What can we do? We can't stop now! Oh God! What did we get ourselves into? I hear a voice. It's a woman's voice. Sounds familiar to me. This voice is... Are you saying? No. Margaret. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Hey, Margaret. I don't sense that distinctive floating feeling that I usually have when I enter the TV world. When I concentrate, I realize that I must be sitting in a chair. The moment I open my eyes, I see vibrant blue. The Velvet Room. I visited this place an untold number of times last year, and once more in my dreams yesterday. I never thought I would return to this place. Huh? It's not a dream this time? What's going on? Didn't my contract end already? Igor, who usually sits in front and center, is nowhere to be seen. The one to greet me is the woman with the silver hair, Margaret. Could this be a personal summoning then? It happened a few times last year too. Margaret smiles as she senses my suspicions. This room is tied to your fate. Nothing that occurs here is meaningless. Though you reached an end to one journey, you now find yourself here again. This shows that you will once again be faced with a question. Oh? A question? And something really is going on? Another mystery has appeared. We are about to be dragged in into it again. Could that be what she means? From here on, what befalls you will upset your status quo. Uh-oh. It is true that you've opened the door once already, but all things change. Nothing ever remains the same. What you gained before will change over time as well. You will have to face them once again. Face them? Again? Shadows? First thing that Margaret's words Start up in my mind is the sight of my friend's smiling faces. Is that going to change? No, I can't be true. And face them again? That's impossible. Once I wake up and leave this room, I should still be with my friends. There's no need to jump to conclusions. But Margaret appears to have anticipated my thought and smiles. While narrowing her eyes. Show me how you will proceed down the path that awaits beyond the door you've opened. All right. My vision wavers. The light, blue light before me vanishes quickly. Wait. I still need to know what you mean by those words. And I'm out. Bookmark. Yes. All right, let's go. Where am I? Okay, let me see the pause menu. Okay, oh, okay, message speed, instant, unread text, skip, personal default, story select, main menu, okay. What did I get thrown to when I left that blue room? The scenery is so unexpected that I'm at a loss. This is a school. It's a music room of Yasugami High. I attended the school with my friends until recently, and I was in the mu in the music club. There's no mistaking it. We're into the TV together, so why am I here? No, that's not right. I hear the I hear the TV world's music, so I must be in it. This is no wait. This has to be the TV world. Mm-hmm. Graffiti on the ground. Shoes placed like they're from some kind of ritual. Oh. Eerily shining eyes of the portraits on the wall. I just noticed that. Oh my god. 
The more careful I look, the more I realize that this is not the real Yasugami High. Most of all, I sense no warmth from this place. Like I always did from the students who would come and go from here. This is a fake. This is definitely not the school I attended. But what happened to turn the world inside the TV? To this. On top of that, we entered the TV from our usual entrance, but... I ended up in a completely different place. This has never happened before. Yeah. I also realized that my friends aren't with me either, of course. Did we somehow get separated? I start to feel chills down my spine and look around. Hello, sorry for the wait. Freeze? Greetings, boys and girls of Yasagami. The P1 Grand Prix is about to begin. There's no need for manners or courtesy or anything today, so let it all hang out. Tell us how you really feel. Oh god, that sounds like Shadow Rize. What the you, Rize? I shout out questions, but she doesn't answer. Girlfriend, answer me! This is Rize Kujikawa, one of our friends of the investigation team that we couldn't contact. Does she not hear me, or is she choosing not to respond? As I ask myself this, I hear different voices echoing as well. I look around in surprise. These voices, it's not just from one or two people. I see countless students staring at me in the hallways. The entrance, everywhere I turn. Huh? <laughs> May I have your attention, please? I, Rosette, will be your commentator. But first, the general has a few words for you all. The general? What's going on? Why are there so many people inside the TV world? Before I can think of any answers, Rize makes another announcement. And, as if on cue, the monitor in the music room turns on. What appeared on it was Teddy. He was wearing a strange hat and cape, just like he did on the Midnight Channel last night. First Rize and now Teddy? What are they doing? You're all here now. Oh god. Well then, I'm proud to announce the opening of our very own P1 Grand Prix! Again! It's the same bizarre tournament that was shown in the Midnight Channel. Then, is Teddy really the one behind this insanity? Teddy, what's going on here? We came to look for you and Rise. Ah, always with the talking, Sensei. It's a big waste of time. What? Less talk and more fighting. With the next challenger, come on down. Uh, next challenger? What are you talking about? Oh, bright light. Teddy looks away and makes a dismissive gesture. Smoke suddenly bursts out from underneath me and robs me of any visibility. Is there someone beyond that white curtain? Eventually, my field of vision begins to clear. I keep my guard up, expecting anything. But who should appear but Yosuke? I hadn't expected to run into him like this. I'm relieved to see that he's safe. Teddy did say something about a challenger just a moment ago. I recall that the P1 Grand Prix that appeared on the Midnight Channel looked a lot like some kind of fighting competition. Wait, am I supposed to fight Yosuke now? That's not funny at all. Great, they're expecting you and me to fight. Huh, looks like. Sheesh, what's Teddy thinking? Good question. Oh. Starting that up already? I won't let you get all buddy buddy with each other. These battles are fought to the death. Only the victor can proceed! To the death, excuse me? This joke's gone on far enough, Teddy. We're not gonna play along with that. I'll go over at Yosuke, hoping that he would agree with me. But he doesn't appear interested in what I have to say. Uh, Brosuke? Oh, really? I guess he should declare me the winner then. Yosuke? What? You don't plan on fighting, right? That means I win by default. That was not what I was expecting to hear. What's gotten into you, Yosuke? You have some reason to be talking like this? Can't figure out what's going on. Just can continue to speak in a carefree manner. Is that something that I simply couldn't believe? Oh, but is that okay with you? I mean, since Nanako-chan's here and all? What? Nanako's here? Wait, really? You haven't seen her? She's with Teddy. That can't be. I saw Nanako back at the house when I left this morning. Even then, Nanako can't enter the TV world on her own. 
she's in this world? Can't believe it for a moment. But what if it's true? Just come into TV world can tire a person out very quickly. On top of that, if someone who can't use a persona comes here, it can sometimes even be fatal. Where is she? Yosuke, where's Nanako? Whoa, what's gotten into you, partner? No need to get hysterical. You know what happens. Why are you so calm about this? You know what happened to her last time she came here. Nanako did come into this TV, to this world once last year. It was not something any of us would have wanted to happen. That was the start of a whole chain of events. Remembering them is heart-wrenching, even now. So why? No. Even then, it might be wrong for me to lash out at Yosuke for the way he's acting. Calm down. I need to think straight here. All Yosuke said was that he saw her with Teddy. Then, was Nanako brought here by Teddy if he's the leader of this tournament? Yosuke, be straight with me. Are you sure Nanako is with Teddy? Uh, how should I know? If I had to guess, I'd say she's probably still with him. Man, are you all right? Are you that worried about Nanako-chan? Of course. I wonder people look at you funny, thinking you have a sister complex. <laughs> Sense of wrongness that I've been feeling this whole time is getting even strong. This is not Yosuke. True. Yosuke may, may say some insensitive things, but mostly that's because he reads too much into a situation and acts out over it. He's not the type of guy to enjoy making hurtful remarks like this. Yosuke, are you all right? Huh? What are you talking about? I should be the one saying that to you. She's not even your real sister. All that big bro stuff really creeps me out. That's not him. Mm, it was a while ago that I saw her. It's probably too late to save her now. You know how things went last year after all. Yosuke. He's definitely not the Yosuke I know. Yosuke is my friend. You wouldn't be so callous as that. At least, I thought so. Up until now. He was the one who had to face the pain of losing someone he cared about when the murders first started last year. I can't hate him for accidentally mentioning someone who was dead. But the way he's acting, he's doing this on purpose. I suddenly draw my sword and I face Yosuke. Draw your weapon. You'll get your fight. What? Dude, what are you saying? You told me you let me win by default. To be honest, I've been thinking that this Yosuke before me was some kind of fake. I even wondered if something had happened to him, and Yosuke's shadow had appeared again in this world. But this wrongness that I keep sensing is nothing like that. This probably is the real Yosuke. What? The strangeness I feel is because these words really are coming out of the mouth of someone I never thought would say them. If so, then... I don't know if you're being controlled or if there's something else going on here. Either way, you must understand the best way to resolve the situation. There's no way to tell if what I'm saying is really getting through to him at all. I want to figure out what's going on. Just have to fall for this trap once. Sorry, but I'm gonna go all out. No hard feelings. Huh? All that talk and you're gonna fight against your partner after all? Well, whatever. Let's hurry up and get this started. Ready? I'm ready. Alright, we get to fight. Place a bookmark. Okay. Scene three. Okay. Yu Narukami versus Yosuke Hanamura. Alright. Oh! Oh, I have, all right, let me, I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, hold on. I need to watch. Okay. Uh. Okay. Uh. Um. Still a match for you. Okay. 
That wasn't that bad. Place a bookmark. Okay, that was that was pretty cool. That was actually pretty cool. <laughs> Amazing sensei! Keep that up and zoom on ahead! Ahead? You're gonna continue with this? Teddy, about Nanako. <laughs> I don't wanna spoil the surprise. If you want to find out, you'll have to get to me! And I can't say why, but I think you should hurry! I need to learn the controls. The monitor shuts off. So I haven't learned anything about Nanako. But he did seem to have been expecting me to ask about her. I don't want to think about it, but Nanako really may be here. The moment the monitor turned off, the students began to leave, like waves in the receding tide. No, they don't look like students anymore. There's something inhuman just taking the shape of students. I was too focused on the fight to notice, but it seems their true forms were coming through. They look like silhouettes. Could they be shadows? Even so, I don't sense any hostility from them. Well, they're not a threat and they're going away. There's no need to chase after them. Besides, there's something more important to do right now. Yosuke, are you alright? I went towards where Yosuke lies, collapse on the ground, and give him my hand to help him up. Ow, couldn't you hold back a little? I seriously thought you were gonna kill me. I was not. The same went for you. I wouldn't have stood a chance if I held back on you. Yosuke grimaces in pain as he stands, but he doesn't seem to have suffered any severe injuries. That's good. I mean, I couldn't risk going easy on him, so I was a little worried that I'd accidentally hurt him. But once we get a good look at each other, Yosuke's demeanor suddenly changes. Anyway, that aside, shut up about the nurses already. It's not like that's the only thing I ever think about. What's this about nurses? Huh? You were harping on it the whole time. How can you stand there and constantly bash my taste in women with a straight face? Is it such a crime to like nurses? Oh... Wait a second. I don't understand why he's suddenly angry, but it's not making any sense at all. Tell Yosuke to calm down and we go over what he thought had happened before the fight. We learned that our memories of what each of us said had been... Ha each of us had been sane didn't match up at all. According to Yosuke, it seems that I've been, well, teasing him about his taste in women. Yosuke was so heated up over what I suddenly said that he almost went into a graphic detail, but I stopped him before things went too far. I mean, really, it's best for both of us if we pretend this never happened. But thanks to our conversation after the battle, I've come to realize something. If we've been hearing each other say things neither of us had been meaning to say, then... Yosuke, let me ask you something. Is it true that Nanako is here in this world? She is? Yosuke is at, at a loss for words. I had no idea what I was talking about. Just as I thought. Yosuke doesn't know anything about Nanako. If it's true, then what I heard Yosuke saying before the fight was something that Yosuke couldn't possibly have said. Which only makes me more convinced that I have the right idea. What I heard wasn't what Yosuke had meant to say. I don't know how to put it. I don't know how, but something else had made Yosuke say those words, even if he didn't know he was saying them. It reminds me, Teddy on the screen said that I needed to get him, get to him if I wanted to find out the truth. Does that mean that Teddy had done this to us? I guess there's no choice but to keep going. Anoku's good friends with Teddy. I want to imagine it happening, but if he wanted to kidnap her, it's certainly possible he could have. I want to go home at once and check to make sure she's okay, but I have no idea where I am. Even worse, Teddy holds the means to returning to the real world. There's no way out of here unless I find him on my own. Taking off? Yeah. Well, be careful. Be careful. I'm worried about you. Do your best. I sense a lot of emotions behind those words. Yes. I know that now. I'm hearing the real Yosuke. I take Yosuke cheering me on, on to heart and leave the music room. Teddy had said that only the winner could go on this tournament. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's probably not a lie. Yosuke understands that as well. That's why he's trusting me to sort it out, all out, 
and lets me go without much talk. He's frustrated that he can't help me out. Could just be jumping to conclusions here. After all, Teddy did say that was the rule, but we don't have any proof either way. Hmm, well, might as well see what he meant by that. Stop walking and turn back to Yosuke. Oh, uh, one last thing. What about those nurses? Ah, quit it already! Are you out of your mind again? <laughs> Yosuke turns bright red and rushes towards me, flailing wildly in an attempt to stop me from finishing. And... What? There's a painful sounding noise as he runs into something invisible and slowly slides, slides to the floor. What is this? Huh. So there's an invisible wall. Looks like the loser can't leave the room. Oh... Let's say there's some force that prevents the loser from leaving the area where the fight took place. It's likely that every time one of these battles happen, happens here, the winner will get sorted out this way. That's annoying. I see how it works now. Thanks. Teddy really has kidnapped Nanako. There's no time to lose. Don't use me as your guinea pig. Wait, that's it? Hey, don't wear yourself out, all right? I won't. Thank you. I turn away as Yosuke shouts at me. Not to worry, Yosuke. I give him a quick smile before leaving the area for real this time. At that moment, I feel a wave of disorientation crash over me. This. I'm surprised that this is happening without warning, but it's not a threat. After all, I know this feeling all too well. What? Ah! Okay, I got scared for a second. I'm like, what? To the velvet room. I've been leaving the music room, but now I'm sitting in the velvet room for some reason. Margaret greets me with her usual smile. This room truly is mysterious. But why would she summon me like this? Margaret sees my suspicious expressions and speaks up. Things have only just begun, and yet you already seem tired. Hey, a lot. The misfortune that has befallen you can be thought of as a sort of trial. A trial? I want to know the details behind her words, but I know that she won't answer me even if I ask. The inhabitants of the Velvet Room never reveal anything. That's because they can only watch over the choices of their guests make. Margaret's smile broadens when she sees that I don't intend to ask her anything. Indeed. I am an observer on your journey. I would do nothing so thoughtless as to force you to make choices. Of course. You do not need such provocations. I already know that you shine brilliantly enough. The shine she speaks of. Could it be about my ability to use personas? Yes, that is part of your brilliance. She reads my mind. Personas are masks of resolution, strengthened by controlling one's heart, by forming bonds. You understand this well, don't you? Yeah, that's how we all fought up till now. Yes, indeed. But one's heart is intangible. It cannot be seen and cannot be felt. When polished, it releases a strong light unlike anything else. But it can also be clouded by trivial things. Have you ever felt that way? Yeah. Maybe true. You may be more conscious of that fact than most because you hold the power of the wild card. The wild card, there we go. Fighting games are like my thing. I love this, so I just need to learn the controllers. Margaret's voice, Margaret's voice fades away as she answers me. From here on, you will be forced to re-examine the things you know as bonds. Okay. How will you face the changes to come, and what choices will you make? Oh, there's a hallway. And open my eyes again. I'm in the school's hallway. I open my eyes up. Oh, I turn around and see the door to the music room closed behind me. Was I only summoned to the velvet room in spirit? There's no way for me to figure out what just happened, but I think back on what Margaret has told me. It changes, huh? Even though the people of the velvet room avoid saying much, what little do they have to say has always meaning. Well, it's true that Margaret has said some strange things while I've known her, but she's never said anything meaningless while on duty. I would assume that this would be the case now. I may have to keep her words to heart. 
Place a bookmark. Yes. All right, next scene. In any case, I need to concentrate on this case for now. I'm sure I'll understand the meaning behind what she said when the time comes. I must proceed. Though this bizarre place looks nothing like the Yasugami High and I attended, the building seems strangely familiar as I run through it. Teddy had appeared on the monitor in the music room. From the looks of things, he appeared to be behind what was happening. But I heard Rize's voice over the school's PA system before my fight with Yosuke. This school works anything like the real one. I can make a good guess as to where Teddy and Rize are. It might be the announcement room. But of course, things aren't that easy. Those invisible walls keep getting in my way wherever I go. It seems that some of these walls don't let anybody through, no matter if they won or lost their fights. Every single time I run into one, I'm forced to take another path. Aside, like my route is already set for me. I feel like I'm being led somewhere. Most likely. I stop for a moment in the hallway out of the practice building and mutter to myself while I look around. Who is... no. Where are they trying to lead me? At that moment. Hey, you there! You're one of them participants in that there Grand Prix thing, right? Huh? The voice that I don't recognize at all breaks me from my reverie. And simply jump back and draw my sword in surprise. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's the big idea? You could poke someone's eye out swinging that thing around. I like your accent. I turn and see a girl that I've never seen before. Was she part of the crowd? No, she looks like a real person. She was caught by surprise when I suddenly pointed my weapon at her. Although she flinches, her words don't lose any of their intensity. How bold of her. That may seem like an odd thing to say, but it's what suddenly crosses my mind. But this girl doesn't seem to have any intention of attacking me. I sheed my sword but remain cautious. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Sorry ain't gonna cut it. What? All right, the jig is up. I'm putting the kibosh on this tournament right now. Eh? Hey, wait, hold on a second. I'm not in this because I want to be. I'm trying to stop the tournament. I'm trying to act non-threatening, but the girl continues to glare at me. What in the world is this girl? She's wearing Yasugami High uniform. She said something about the student council. I don't recognize her. I don't encounter people here in this world that often. If a person is here, then they're either a persona user or a- Why are you here by the way? Wait, did you fall inside a TV? That's right. I might have to put it a little differently, but if she can't enter a TV herself, then the only possibility that someone threw her in. That was- That was what was happening in the murders from last year. Fall inside a TV? She's not aware of it. If she was a Persona user, I don't see why she'd hide that fact. She was trying to keep that from me, and she should have come and talked to me like this. Does that mean she's a victim after all? I carefully choose my words to avoid provoking the girl and introduce myself. I'm Yu Narukami. I was a second year at Yasugami High until last year. Huh? Last year? But that uniform... Hmm? Oh no, this is... Uh... Kind of my usual equipment when I'm in the TV world. Equipment? Uh, never mind. Uh, forget it. Well, if you were only around till last year, I ain't gonna blame you for not knowing. Knowing what? I'm the new student council president. Nice meeting you. Oh. Student council president. If I'm remembering correctly, student council elections should have taken place just before the holidays. I've no knowledge who won any of those elections since I'd left Inaba before they took place. That reminds me, I didn't have any friends on the student council last year either. This girl may very well be the president. No reason not to believe her. Now it's your turn to spill. You said you ain't in the tournament because you want to be. Then what are you doing here? And what's this tournament about in the first place? That's a good question, my friend. 
I feel that I don't explain things very clearly to her, that it will only provoke her further. But trying to tell her everything about what's going on here will only confuse her. Tell her about the fact that this place is inside a television and tell her about the other things that are going on. First, I tell her about Teddy, that a friend of mine is likely the one who set this tournament up. Second, that I encountered some of my friends who were dragged into this as well. They were acting strangely. And third, that my cousin, Nanako, still in an elementary school, may have been dragged into this mess. The girl calling herself the student council president seems skeptical while I talk, but eventually she sighs. So if I got this right, you didn't start this, but your friend did. Apparently. Mm. Well, you don't seem like you're lying. Seems that she somehow grasped the gist of what I was trying to say. I thank her out of politeness, but she laughs and asks why I'm thanking her. Still one more difficult task left to hand. How do I make her understand that this is all within another world one accesses by going through a TV screen? She still appears to be energetic, but doesn't change the fact that she's in danger. I have to get her out of this world no matter what. Where does that sound come from? That sounded like it came from the gym. I ought to tell you to go home, but I get that you're worried about your sis. Come on, let's go check it out. Right, let's go. We both start running at the same time. I reach my full running speed when something occurs to me. I rise to see Miss President keeping pace right beside me. Just standing still in this world would be strenuous for a normal person, but she doesn't even seem out of breath. She's quite impressive. Take a moment to quietly praise the girl running next to me. Hmm. I don't know, that seems very fishy. Oh, what the heck? We burst into a gym where all the noise came from, but there's no one here. Instead, we see high, huge piles of stacked chairs. They're twisted and intertwined, and everyone on the open floor of the gym forming huge towers that reach almost to the ceiling. What is this? Who would go to all this trouble? That's a good question. The girl stares up at the chair, seemingly dumbfounded. Suddenly, the monitor of the gym flickers to life. And, as expected, Teddy appears again in that costume. Ugh. What is it, Teddy? Oh, oh, oh. Are you on a hot date, Sensei? I'm not! Well, that's fine with me, of course. But, shouldn't you keep your mind on the fighting? <laughs> Whoa, you look so mortified! That's the face I was hoping to see! He's not saying anything completely straight. But he's obviously hinting that he knows I'm worried about Nanako. I know that saving Nanako is important, but I can't leave Miss President here alone and, and abandon her to this world either. Still, I feel Teddy's words causing me to doubt myself. And Miss President raises her voice. Hey you! You're the ringleader of this mess, aren't you? What's the idea? Raising a ruckus like this without running it by the student council. Pack it in and clean all this up already. She speaks as fast as and clearly as she had when I first met her. After getting a clearer look at her, I feel like I've come to realize where she gets her courage from. She truly wishes to protect her school. Her strong awareness of her duty is surpassing her fear. But Teddy on the monitor looks annoyed and sneers at Miss President. It's incredibly detestable. I can't believe that Teddy can even make such a malicious expression. What's that tiny thing? I'm in the middle of an important conversation with Sensei. A yappy little mutt like you should be muzzled and sit in the corner. Damn, don't say that. He has absolutely no intent of dealing with her seriously. This president turns bright red in humiliation from being brushed off like that. This is enough. I take a step forward to put myself between the monitor and Miss President. Leave this to me. Miss President's lips are trembling. She must be angry that there's nothing she can do by herself. I don't want to anger. I don't, I don't want that anger to be in vain, so I turn to face the Teddy on the monitor. That was pretty harsh, Teddy. Hard to believe a womanizer like you would say such things. Ooh, low blow. What's so attractive about a shameless liar like her? Liar? You know something about her? The way you said that makes it sound like if there's some history between the two of them. 
But as usual, he doesn't bother to give any details in his answer. It's gonna be Chie, isn't it? Jim has to be Chie. After that line, another cloud of smoke rises from the floor. This time, it is Yukiko who appears. Oh, never mind. Oh, thank goodness you're safe. What's the matter? It's uh, nothing. Are you all right? Has anything odd happened to you? Odd? No, I, I don't think so. Yukiko seems alarmed to see me in a defensive posture. Feel my shoulders relax in relief as I shift my weight to stand normally. It seems that she hasn't been affected like Yosuke had. I didn't think I'd been that tense though. Now that the Yuki, now that's the Yuki car, remember. She is sharp as always, exactly when we need her. If she's not being confused, then I can immediately ask for her help. I try to explain what I need from her. Nanako might be in here. I'm heading to the announcement room where Teddy is. I need you to protect this girl for me. She might be a victim of all this. I motion to her Miss President standing next to me. Yuko looks at me in surprise. I don't blame her though. But what Yukiko said next was even more surprising. Here we go. Why do I have to do that? It's not like I know her or anything. I'm not gonna help her because I don't know her. Is that really what she's saying? I can understand that she might be cautious when meeting someone for the first time, but would Yukiko really think that way? No. Got to be the same way with Yosuke. Same uncanny sense of wrong wrongness is coming back to me when I hear Yukiko speak. Yukiko, not you too. Calm down and listen to me. Can you understand what I'm saying? Huh? What are you saying all of a sudden? I can hear you clearly. What did you mean by you too? I try to question her. Yukiko's expression returns to normal. I can't tell anymore. It doesn't look like she's being controlled by someone. Am I overthinking this too much? At the very least, she doesn't seem enthusiastic about this P1 Grand Prix. This is probably a trick the enemy is playing on us. They're trying to get us to fight each other. I'll say it one more time, Yukiko. I'd like you to protect this girl for me. Sorry, but um, I don't know how to put this. It just feels like you're being really selfish. Oh boy. You always help people who have nothing to do with you, and I admire that. But where does that leave us? It's always her friends who get put in danger because of your self-centeredness. Oh. I was hearing her voice, but her words are scathing. Scathing. I'm convinced now. There's no obvious change in her attitude like that had been with Yosuke, but something must be warping Yukiko's words too. Her words may seem like a sound argument, but she means something else. I don't care if someone who isn't related to me gets hurt. That's definitely not something Yukiko would say. Ryu Kiko would never say something that disrespect the value of a life that way. Don't be deluded. Whatever happens to Yosuke is happening to Yukiko too. I don't understand the details, but Yukiko hasn't had a complete change of heart. Yukiko. What the? Yuka? I draw my sword. Miss President quickly tries to stop me. But I can't answer her right now. If battle were to clear this up point up this pointless misunderstanding between us that the time to fight is now. Ooh, now that's our senpai. You'll show no mercy, not even to a girl if it's for your own goals. Shut up, Rize. I love you, but shut up. You're a real bastard with a sister complex. Keep it up and bring them all down. <sighs> Here we go. Ignore the taunts being delivered in Rize's voice. I mean, if our words aren't getting through to each other and we have to fight without understanding what's going on, we'll come to an understanding later. I have to believe. Both myself and my friends. I hold my sword to the side to protect Miss President, who is standing behind me. Sorry, but you need to stay back. Whatever you see here, try to stay calm. Promise me you won't run away. What happens next will probably surprise her greatly, but I doubt Miss President will run away. She's already shown me how strong her determination is. I glance at her over my shoulder. Although she looks worried, she still gives me a slight nod of agreement. Now, time to do this. I must end this as quickly as possible. Persona. I concentrate all my sense to summon my strength of heart, my persona, Izanagi. 
If I allow myself to go easy on Yukiko, she will surely defeat me. Yukiko smiles faintly and takes her battle stance. She resisted the idea of protecting Miss President, but she seems to have no qualms whatsoever about fighting me. There's definitely something else controlling her. Come, Konohana there it is. Yukiko's black hair forms gratefully arc in the air as her persona Konohana Sakuya rises behind her. That's right. Leisure Yukiko would have a beautiful heart like this. Wait for me. I will save you! Let's go! Place a bookmark? Yes. And after the fight, I think I get one as well. There it goes. Finally! Oh! Oh my god. Ah, my. I am. Can I not run? Oh, damn, she teched that. I meant to do something else. Alright. Oh, I'm getting a little bit more used to the controllers. Whew. That was pretty fun. Place a bookmark? Yes. But... Mm. Let's see what time is it? Uh, I think just a little longer after the next scene. Yeah, after the next scene. So we finished the Yukiko side at least. The winner is you, Senpai. <laughs> what an utter thrashing! <laughs> I love all this animosity. Oh my God. Shut up, Teddy. That's the real thrill of the P1 Grand Prix. I don't care to hear any more of Teddy's jest. I saw a reservation about fighting against my friends, but I now know that there is no other way to save them. I'm resolved to do what must be done. Also, there's no knowing if Teddy and Rize have been affected, just like Yosuke and Yukiko had. If they are, there's no use in trying to talk to them through the monitor like this. That's the conclusion I've come to, but this president seemed to have other ideas. How much further are you gonna push this? Why are you doing it anyway? These guys are friends. What's so much fun about making friends fight each other? President invents her frustrations at Teddy's image on the monitor. But I was a bit surprised at how she worded it. She seemed more upset that he was making friends fight each other. Not that he had dragged the entire school into this mess. We only just met, but she clearly sympathizes with us and understands the pain we're going through. I'm embarrassed, but proud at the same time. A girl with such compassion would be a great student council president. It's no wonder she was elected to represent the student body of Yasugami High. It's all right. Thanks, though. It's not all right. This is. She's so worked up, and she lashes out at me. Perhaps her heart is a little too honest. But her anger sets my mind at ease. She's right. What General Teddy is doing right now cannot be forgiven. I glare at the monitor. Sorry, but you're not getting your wish. What? Did you think this would be all it took to break us apart? That it would make us hate each other? Sorry to say, but that's a huge mistake on your part. Mm -hmm. I believe in my friends. They'll never get taken in like that. <laughs> you're so stupid. What kind of sensei are you? I'm warning you now. If you really are Teddy, then we'll get you back to normal no matter what it takes. Even if it costs us our lives. Agreed. But if you're an imposter hiding behind Teddy's face, I will make you pay for toying with us. Ooh. <laughs> and off it goes. Teddy scoffs and turns around. Monitor certainly switches off. Only turning on us without any signs of remorse. That's not like Teddy at all. 
No. He's most likely not the real Teddy. Seeing the anger in his face only strengthens my suspicions. Someone must be taking Teddy's form to make it look like he's the one committing these acts. Uh, um, that girl's come around. Oh, Yukiko! They immediately rush to Yukiko's side. Sorry. Yukiko, are you alright? Sorry, I couldn't go easy on you. No, it's okay. You aren't your usual self, but I could tell by your eyes that there was something going on. I'm sorry too. Did I hurt you? Ah, I'm fine, thank Kinda, you. Yeah, I sure wouldn't want to get into it with you again. Try to pass it off as a joke, and we look at each other and laugh. Things are going the same way as they had with Yosuke. It's becoming clear now. Hey, did I say things that offended you earlier? Um, yes. You did. Hugo hesitates, as if ever remembering it is a difficult experience. What in the world did my illusions say to her? But it was something horrible. Whereas doing this is certainly finding the most annoying way of getting us to fight. But what I supposedly said to her doesn't matter. He goes still hesitant to bring it up, so I tell her not to worry about it. I don't need to know what I said. I just wanted to see if my guess was right. It looks like our enemy has the power to confuse our senses. My first opponent was Yosuke, and he told me a similar story after we fought. Hmm? You said something bad to Yosuke-kun too? What did you tell him? Sure you want to know? <laughs> I'm the only one admitting to what happened. That's not fair, is it? But what curiosity... But that curiosity is in line with the Yukiko I know. I read the issue of a smile and call it to Miss President who's standing behind us. What kind of people are you? Hmm? Oh, right. We used our personas. Yeah, we should at least explain to her what's going on. She did see everything that just happened. This would be a good opportunity to tell her everything. Introduce Miss President and Yukiko to each other and fill the parts that I had left out of my previous explanation. I tell her about the personas. I tell her that we're actually in a world inside the television. And I tell her how the scenery here changes according to the hearts of the people who enter it. She looks doubtful while I'm talking, but considering that she's just seen our personas only moments ago, she doesn't immediately deny it. Still. It seems that she can't accept it at all either. She crosses her arms as if lost in thought. On the other hand, it seems that Yukiko didn't know that Yasugami High had a new student council president either. Yukiko apologized for not having paid attention to the elections in April. And that's it in a nutshell. So, that's what you meant by falling into a TV. Yep. Yeah, which makes me believe this school could be a part of your mind that's materialized. This school came from me? That's a lot to swallow. I'm not surprised. Why is it different this time around, though? Usually the victim's shadow appears first. Mm-hmm. That's right. I had doubts about that, too. There's a reason why it's dangerous for people who can't use their personas to enter this world. Besides the obvious reason... Such as not being able to escape and being unable to protect themselves from shadows, a, person a person's shadow separates from them. The shadow that splits off are strongly attached to the original people they came from and will try to harm them in order to become independent entities, identities. I didn't give it much thought since Miss President seems so energetic, but it's possible that this had happened to her as well. I put this together with a conversation I had with Teddy a moment ago and had come to a conclusion. Teddy who's hosting this tournament? What if he's actually this girl's shadow? Huh? Ooh, what? I noticed he got agitated when I called him an imposter. A fake Teddy would mean he's someone else using Teddy's form. I see. If this place reflects Miss President's heart, her shadow must be here. And right now, the strongest candidate is... Teddy's impersonator. That's right. We both saw an illusion, and at the very least, the enemy has the power to delude our senses and make us see and hear things that aren't there. On top of that, it can alter what others hear and say and see us do. If it can do that, then I can easily see that our enemy can use that power to change its appearance. That means this could be impersonating Teddy and leading this tournament. That still leaves the question as to why it would take on the appearance of someone it doesn't know. I've seen shadows in the past that look bizarre that took bizarre appearances, but this is the first time I've seen one impersonate an existing person. Does this shadow have some kind of objective? 
and I come to my senses. I see that Miss President has turned pale and is staring down at the ground. Let's talk about shadows and another world doesn't seem to be reaching her, but seems troubled at the thought that she might be causing all this trouble. I'm about to tell her that the action of the shadow aren't her fault. But Miss President rises to her feet. I'm gonna check out the announcement room. Hmm? But General Teddy's behind the whole shebang, right? And if he came from me, then I gotta own up to the responsibility. A student body president, I can't let this go. Well, let's go. Well, uh, wait, you're being reckless. We'll take care of the shadow. You need to- What? Get out of this TV world? And how am I supposed to do that? Go on. Show me the door. Uh, uh. Well. <laughs> Her eyes are filled with fires of determination, just as they had been when I first met her. Her sense of responsibility and her awareness of her duty say that she will never back down. Your little cousin's in the announcement room, and you're gonna go save her, right? Right. You might not be as strong as the two of you, but I'm no slouch in a fight. Oh? Wouldn't it be better if we went together? No. I agree. Don't you understand? This world is... I know it's dangerous, but there's gotta be something only I can do to help. Hell, that aside, I can't leave after causing so much trouble. Making friends fight each other. I'm going on ahead. You don't want to waste time arguing, yeah? I mean, this is only all speculations, but okay. As president declares this in a voice that brooks no argument and takes off running. Yikes, I wasn't expecting her to behave rashly like this. Remember how fast she can run. I'm going after her. I need to go at once or I'll lose her. Please, you have to go after her. You seem sees me hesitate and knows exactly what to say. She's right. There's so much we don't understand, but there's no way the investigation team can let a victim run off and die. Yuko ignores the fact that I've been leaving her here alone and tells me to follow a girl she's only just met. This is the exact opposite of the behavior she'd been displaying before the fight. Now that is the Yukiko Amagi I know. I'm ashamed that I had even slightly let myself be confused by the way I'd heard her speak before, and I answer her. I'll come back for you, no matter what. I believe in you. Thank you. You go nods to me, and I turn to begin running as fast as I can. I have to rely on the fainted echoes of footsteps I had to pursue Miss President through the school. I can't use my memories of the school in order to navigate, because it, the invisible walls are everywhere. The announcement room is upstairs. That obviously limits the paths that she can take. I'll catch up to her no matter what. Bookmark? No. I've been running after Miss President for a while, but I still can't catch sight of her. She's so fast, it's almost supernatural. I even begin to think that her path may be hindered by the invisible walls. Wait a second. I had to think about it. She's not a participant of the P1 Grand Prix. She did appear in the introduction video. Even though she'd been there when I faced off with Yukiko, she wasn't affected by the rules. Would she be able to walk through these walls? If so, then catching up to her will be quite difficult. This is I'm thinking this. Suddenly, a blue door appears in my path. I've seen this before. This is the entrance to the Velvet Room. I don't have time to deal with this, or so I think. But when I consider the timing of its appearance, I can't help but feel that I'm, there must be a reason for it. I make up my mind and reach the floor, the door. As I walk through the door, I feel a slight sense of lightful, lightheadedness, and I close my eyes re reflexively. When I open my eyes, I'm seated in my usual position, and Margaret is smiling quietly at me, as if nothing is different. When she sees that I've noticed her, she speaks as if aware of my impatience. <laughs> you seem flustered, but time has no meaning here. Margaret politely points this out, knowing that I'm in a hurry. Time is meaningless, huh? I thought I had figured out a few things about this room, but it seems that there's still more for me to learn about. If time doesn't pass while I'm in this room, I should concentrate on what she's about to tell me. Once again, as if reading my thoughts, Margaret smiles. It seems you've emerged victorious and have come away with a piece of the truth. Though you are in a garden of deceit, you have the vision to go forward. Very impressive. Thank you. Is that student council president's shadow really the cause of all this then? Who can say? All I know is that you are getting ever closer to the truth. Alright. There is one thing I can tell you. 
Margaret's golden eyes are fixated on mine. If that girl's shadow is the cause of this misfortune, she will face her trial. But it's separate from your fate. Oh. You have your own trial to overcome. Keep that to heart. My own trial? I don't mean to, but I repeat what Margaret had just said. Everyone sees various things in you that draw them to you. Salvation. Hope. I myself find fascination in watching over you. Fate may not be the author of your trials, but you are destined to be tested. <laughs> Margaret smiles mischievously and nods towards me. <sighs> Another slight feeling of life lightheadedness passes, and I return to that otherworldly school. The blue door is nowhere to be found, as if it had n never been there to begin with. I look up. I still don't understand what my own trial is supposed to be. But for some reason, my mind has cleared up a bit. <sighs> Place a bookmark? Yes. And this is where we'll be ending the first episode. So, in the next one, we are going to continue right off where we left off. So, hope you guys are enjoying these videos and enjoying the new Let's Play. Because this is super fun. I am enjoying this so, so much. And I hope you guys are enjoying this Let's Play as well. So, if you are, please leave a like, comment, and share. That always helps out against that pesky YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to join the Moonlight Army today. Hit that bell icon to be notified when I upload a new video. If you guys want to stalk me on my social medias, the links will be in the description box below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So, take care, guys. Bye-bye.